All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dan. Today, I want to talk about the micro cement sink that I made that sits on top of my vanity. I've had loads of questions about this sink. How did I make it? Do I have like an in-depth step-by-step video? And this is kind of that. It's not a detailed tutorial, but it will definitely give you guys a, a fairly good idea of how this was made. So let's start first with the design. All right, so I had a general idea of how I wanted this to look. I knew the dimensions that it needed to be because I already had the base of the vanity made. It was roughly 850 mil wide by about 500 mil deep. I wanted it to be around 120 to 150 millimeters thick to give that like nice chunky look. I wanted it to be lightweight because I wanted to fit it on a wall mounted vanity so I didn't want solid concrete. I was kind of into that water plane style sink. You guys know the one, it's just where you got a flat surface that the water hits that rolls off into the waste. And most of all, I wanted it to fit the aesthetic that the bathroom already had. And I wanted this sink to be an extension of that. We're going for that sort of minimalist look. So, so it made sense to continue that material down into the sink. Now for the plan. All right, so my idea was to make this sink out of structural ply, which I would then coat with micro cement. I wanted to use structural ply because it's a super cheap and easy material to work with, being a carpenter. If preparing the plywood correctly, uh, the micro cement would have no dramas adhering to it. Now that's the top of the sink, the part that you see, but what happens when the water goes down the waste? I was kind of scratching my head about that for a little while, like how, how do I capture the water and how do I plumb it so, it's, uh, so it'll work, you know? So my idea was to basically create a box gutter out of, you know, like color bond, like sheet metal. We created a heap of custom box gutters at work. And I figured by using the same principles here, this sink is gonna see a lot less water than a standard box gutter on a house would see. And if it works there, then why wouldn't it work with this vanity? <laughs> so the idea was to basically send the dimensions of my box gutter to a roofing supply store. Put it together with pop rivets and silicon the same way that we would with the box gutter and mount that to the underside of the micro cement sink on the top you can see the micro cement shell that was made out of plywood and on the underneath side you have your box gutter which captures the water which is then plumbed into a trap So you want to take your 18 millimeter structural ply. I went and cut the size of the top of my vanity. I also ripped the size to the depth that I wanted the vanity to be. From there, I drew a rectangle in the middle, cut that out with a track saw and use that piece to create the water plane. Now, you wanna make sure if you are creating this water plane, the thing that the, the water comes out of the tap and hits, you wanna make sure that's got enough fall that the water hits it and runs away. You, you do not want the water to hit and sit there. Now, once I have all that figured out and all my pieces cut, I then proceed to glue it, brat it, and screw it. glue does the majority of the holding the brad nails temporarily hold it and the screws stop it from from pulling apart now once i've got my sink all made up i then paint it with an undercoat All 
right, so I use this undercoat. This undercoat is made by Zinza. It's like an American-made product. They sell it at Bunnings. It's water-based. It is called Bullseye One Two Three. It's an undercoat, a primer, and a stain blocker. It dries really quickly. You can recoat within the hour. Clean it up with water. This is an awesome undercoat. I've used it on many things, so you can buy it and use it elsewhere. But um, yeah, this is what I coated all the plywood with. The reason I want to undercoat my plywood is it helps it from drawing in extra moisture. So by undercoating it, um, I'm sealing it, I'm stopping any stains from leaching out into the micro cement, and I'm also stopping it from, from sucking in extra moisture. So once I have that undercoated twice, I then proceed to run a bead of silicon on the internal joints of my sink. You want to give it quite a big bevel. After that's done, I fit the external angles. You can pick them up at Bunnings, any plaster shop, rendering shop. Then you proceed to waterproof uh, your primed sink. Same thing with the waterproofing. I waterproofed the whole sink, gave it two really good coats, waited 24 hours for it to dry. After waterproofing, you want to apply this mesh. So this is the mesh. It looks a lot like the mesh that you might bandage a plasterboard joint with. The only difference is it isn't sticky and it's also a little bit thinner than that mesh. Once I fit all those external angles, I then prime it with uh, a water-based primer. Now it's the same water-based primer that I used in the main bathroom build. And all these materials are basically leftover materials that I had from the bathroom build. So I didn't actually have to buy any of this micro cement stuff. It was all just left over. Now I give the primer 24 hours and then you can do your base coat of micro cement. Now this is the same process as if you're doing your bathroom. You put on your base coat first. Once that has set, you sand off any little high spots with a little bit of maybe 180 grit sandpaper. And then you do your wet on wet coat, which means one coat of micro cement, let it dry to 80%, and then apply your second coat of micro cement. When both of those coats are basically dry, you get out your little spray bottle, spray the sink, and proceed to burnish it with a steel trowel. So if you guys want some more information about this process, go back and watch my micro cement video. I'll leave a link in the, in the description down below. From there, I go into a little bit more detail about the whole micro cement process. But yeah, burnish it, sand it, get it looking how you want. From there you want to seal it. I did two coats of a water-based sealer and, and pretty much two coats of a solvent sealer as well. All right, so now the top of our micro cement sink is basically done. Now it's time for the undermounted box gutter that I created. All I did here was pop rivet and silicon together, some custom flashings I got made from a local roofing supply store. 
I think the flashings only cost about $80. Then my plumber Matt assisted me in plumbing the, uh, the box gutter to the trap, just as you would with any normal sink. Now, now once again with this micro cement, there's a lot of steps in getting to the final product. However, none of it was super difficult. It just required time. This thing pretty much took me five days to make. From making the plywood shell, to painting, to waterproofing, to micro cementing, to creating the box gutter underneath. Yeah, a fair few hours went into this sink. Now, obviously if you're pushed for time, this may not be the project for you. However, it was fairly cheap. Probably only spent about $150 on this project given that most of the product was left over from the bathroom build. It was the time that really blew out on this. But in saying that, I think it looks awesome. It performs just as I thought it would. I'll obviously let you guys know if there are any dramas with it, but, um, but yeah, so far so good. And yeah, that's it. That's the micro cement sink build. <laughs> If you guys are thinking of doing something like this, let me know in the comments below or feel free to hit me up on Instagram. I'd be happy to help any way I can. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.